If you're an artist or creative person, there's a good chance that you've thought about how you can make money selling your art. But how do you start? What do you need and how do you go about it? Guess what? The answer is surprisingly simple and I'm here to tell you the truth about starting an art business. Hi artists and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and as someone who's been in the professional creative business selling my art and my designs for over 17 years, I feel uniquely qualified to give some advice on the subject. I'm going to put on my business hat for a minute and give you some of the essential things that I think every artist should know before embarking on the journey of selling their art. 10 years ago, I started an Instagram account and on a whim came up with the name Point Brush. I had no logo, um, no website, zero followers, but that didn't stop me from beginning my journey into creative entrepreneurship. Fast forward to today and I have years of experience under my belt, an e-commerce website with over 200 products, uh, a thriving Instagram community and licensing deals with some of my favorite brands. But that didn't happen overnight. Nothing in life happens overnight. So the last thing I want is for this video to feel overwhelming or discouraging in any way, because it took many years of me working both a full-time job and trying to get my art business off the ground until I started seeing any kind of rewarding results. So just know that it's totally normal to feel overwhelmed and for it to take time to get any kind of real momentum going on. The performer Eddie Cantor once said that it takes over 20 years of hard work to become an overnight success. And I think that there is so much truth to that quote. Okay, with that out of the way, I truly believe that anybody has the ability to start a business selling their art. You don't have to be the most um, talented person or the best artist on the planet to have something worthwhile and a value to offer an audience. You already have it in you, I promise. There is one thing that is an absolute non-negotiable though, and that is that you have to take that first step. This might seem like the most obvious thing to say, but you have no idea how many people I encounter who say, I really want to do it. I, I really want this, but I, you know, I need to wait until fill in the blank happens. Waiting to build my website, waiting to buy a new computer, to get better art supplies. I need to get at least 1000 followers on Instagram. The list goes on and on. And while yes, some of these may give you an added boost, um, when you start, you know, delaying things won't get you anywhere closer to your destination. And I always say that I'd rather be in a rickety old, um, canoe halfway to my destination than spending years building the perfect ship that never leaves the harbor. The good news is that in my belief, it's always best to start as small as possible. The idea of spending a lot of time and money to hire a web developer, to build an e-commerce website, or to, to spend a lot of money on creating inventory, in my opinion, is a bad idea unless you really know what you're doing. In my view, any good business can be distilled into three essential things. So I'm gonna ask you to do a little soul searching and identify these three things first. One, what are you good at and what do you actually enjoy doing? Two, what does the marketplace and your competition look like? And three, who's your audience? Sound simple? Not so fast. Number one, what are you good at? This will probably be the most obvious because if you're looking to sell your art, odds are that you've gained proficiency in that department. But really look at the breadth of what you've done and your portfolio up to date and see what you excel at. What are your best pieces? The less obvious one is what do you actually enjoy doing? Well, I'm sure that you know many people would say, I don't really care what I sell or do as long as I get to be creative. Just because you're creative doesn't mean that all aspects of a creative business will be appealing to you. If you're great at painting, it doesn't mean that sourcing and printing on t-shirts would be something that inspires you as much as say, teaching a workshop. Maybe the idea of selling your artwork on t-shirts and mugs sounds awful to you and you see yourself more as someone 
who sells originals to a gallery or to an individual client. And that's totally fine. There are so many ways to make money from your creativity. The more you enjoy what you're actually doing and selling, the more likely you are to stick with it and find it more fulfilling and, and ultimately to be successful at it because it's a marathon, not a sprint. So choosing something that makes you excited to keep going every day is part of the formula for success in the long term. So coming back to more concrete examples, what are different things that you can offer? Um, here are just a few things that you know come to mind off the top of my head. Selling original artwork, selling art prints, making commissioned pieces, selling apparel or objects with your artwork printed on them, teaching your skill, creating logos for local businesses, illustrating for businesses or books or even a local gazette, licensing your art to companies, freelancing. Number two is to evaluate your marketplace and your competition. One of the reasons why I leaned so heavily into the subject matter of ballet and dance earlier on was not only because I was very passionate about it, but also because I saw that at the time there were very few others who were doing the same thing. I also knew from personal experience that there were very few elegantly designed art products with ballet inspired artwork. And there was definitely a community of people who would want it. So I could be different and unique. And there was an audience right there who would want what I make without me having to compete with a whole lot of different artists doing the exact same thing. And that's exactly what I did. Think about your point of difference from other artists or creators like you. Is it your subject matter that appeals to a niche group? Do you make pet portraits, for example? How are you different from others? Maybe, you know, maybe it's your style. Maybe you do them in an Andy Warhol pop art style. That would be really cool. Um, but the more you can identify and highlight your point of difference, the more you'll stand out and have an easier time appealing to your audience. Developing a style is something that I believe is really important to stepping out and being an original artist. And I have a video all about that subject, which I'll link right below. Which brings me to number three, which is who is your audience? One of the biggest mistakes that I see many artists make is believing that if they build a website or a portfolio, that people will just somehow find them and come. It's kind of like throwing a party. You know, just because you put decorations up, hire a DJ, make a cake, doesn't mean that anyone will know to show up. It could be the best party of the year, but unless people actually know about it, you'll be there sitting in an empty room wondering why nobody showed up. And this is where a lot of people who build a website and wonder why it's like crickets and silence out there assume it's because nobody likes their art or what they're selling. They, they give up and they go, oh, well, that was, that was a failure, but it has nothing to do with you or your art. It's, it's just that the people out there who love what you do and can't wait to buy it haven't found you yet. So how do you reach an audience? Start with sharing your creations with family and friends first, and then slowly expand that ring outwards to your local community and beyond. I strongly believe that as an artist, social media and a presence on social media is a must. It's free and if you're smart and you do your research, you can end up connecting with lots of people who will appreciate the beautiful work that you do. A strong social media presence also holds value to potential clients and collaborations in the future. So in that way, I think it's worth the effort. And remember that everyone has started at zero. You're not alone. When I was starting out, I would illustrate some of my favorite dancers and people in my community and tag them. I would send originals out to those who messaged me and in return, some would post my art on their feed, which helped me grow. Over time that snowballed and with it, so did my audience. Now, I don't necessarily recommend doing client work for free because your talent and your time are valuable, but that's a topic for a whole other video. Cultivating an audience takes time, but it's absolutely worth it. So let's say you've done some soul searching and taken the time to think about these three essential questions. What comes next? Well, I'm not going to tell you how you're going to name your business or how to make the products that you're actually selling because there's an infinite range of variables depending on what your art actually is and what you decide to do. 
My biggest advice now is to take that first step. A lot of people think that you need all these technical things in order to be a business. And while yes, it's true that registering your business, you know, creating a logo for your, for your business, creating a website are all things that you will do as you grow. Just know that you really don't need any of those to start making money from your art. You could start at a local farmer's market or find a local art fair, or you could do what I did, which was to sell my art on items produced by other people like Society6 and Casetify who have their own web traffic and audience. Etsy is also a great option, and I'm gonna link everybody below so you can check out all of these different websites. Once I got confident enough with that and saw what was actually working and resonating with my clientele, I inched forward a little bit and built a small free website that just sold a handful of things like art prints that I printed myself. Over time, that snowballed, and as I got more and more traction on Instagram and more customers, that little nugget of a website grew and grew to what it is today. Nothing happened overnight. It was gradual steps, like stepping stones, and you don't really see the progress you're making until you look up and realize that you're actually climbing that mountain and, and really getting somewhere. But again, you have to take that first step because this is the key here. You have to take your business as seriously as you would want your clients and your customers to take you. And that's a commitment. It means staying motivated even if you're getting discouraged or you're tired or you're having a bad day. It also means being open-minded enough to try new things if what you're doing isn't working. Owning a business requires a certain amount of scrappiness and staying nimble so you can adjust and refine as you go. They say that failure isn't final, it's feedback. And guess what? Anybody who pursues this will experience failures and setbacks along the way. I've had more than I can count and anybody else who owns a creative business will attest to the same experience. As long as you stay scrappy, stay smart, look for new opportunities, do your research, and above all, don't give up or lose interest. I promise you that success will follow. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new today. Selling your art can be exhilarating and exciting. It's both inspiring and rewarding. And if you ask me, it's a journey absolutely worth embarking on. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button and to subscribe to get more content just like this. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.